In this lesson, we're going to talk about properties of natural numbers, the three main properties of natural numbers, but also we're going to talk about the properties of 0 and 1 specifically. We're first going to start, though, with the three main properties of natural numbers that we are going to teach in grade 7. The first one that we're going to talk about is called the commutative property. And basically, the way that we can remember it is commute is a very good word. When you commute, you go to and from a place, whether it's school or work, and it's always usually the same distance. It might be longer depending on the time of day, but it's always going to be the same distance, no matter whether you go to and from or from and to. Um, so we're going to split our properties into two um, things, really. We're going to split our properties into an adding and multiplication. In terms of the commutative law, we're going to use a, b, and c as our natural numbers. Uh, so in this case, if a plus b is a plus b, it's the same thing as b plus a. Right? It doesn't matter the order in which we rearrange these letters or these numbers if they were to be numbers. Uh, a plus b is equal to b plus a. Uh, and if we were to do the multiplying, a times b is the same thing as b times a. So for this sake, let's use real numbers. Let's say a is 2 and b is 3. So let's say a is 2 and b is 3. To prove it to you, 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 2. 5 is equal to 5. So this is true. And just like multiplying, if I do 2 times 3, it should be the same thing as 3 times 2. And 6 on this side is equal to 6 on the other side. So this rings true. So that's what we call the commutative property. And it's really when we're dealing with only addition or only multiplication. That's the only time. That's the first property. The second property that we are going to look at is called the associative property or the associative law. And what this means, and again, we're going to do both adding and multiplying. And what this means is, no matter where we put brackets, and no matter what we do first or what we do second, um, we are always going to get the same answer. So we're still going to use the letters A, B, and C, just to give us our examples. And for this, it's just as though A plus B plus c is equal to, well, let me erase this because it's in the way, a plus b plus c, where these are in brackets. When we do order of operations, you'll understand the importance of brackets. But in this case, it's basically just telling you that the brackets are not important because we're just adding everything. And it doesn't matter what order we add everything, we will always get the same answer. It's kind of the same thing when we're multiplying. If a times b times c, it's the same thing as if I did a, uh, b times c. It's the same thing. And so for the sake of just showing you, we'll call a2, b3, and c4. And so if we're going to replace it in here, it would be 2 plus 3 plus 4. Is that equal to 2 plus 3 plus 4? If I do 5 plus 4, is it the same thing as 2 plus 7? Yep, they're both equal to 9. And the same thing on the other side. If I were to do 2 times uh, 3 times 4, is that equal to 2 times 3 times 4? Well, this is 6 times 4. This is 2 times 12. And both of them are equal to 24. So yes, this absolutely checks out. That is the associative law. And remember, we're only dealing with just adding just multiplying. No other operation will this work. And finally, the last property that we're going to look at is called, and it's probably one of the most important ones too, is called the distributive property or the distributive law. And this is very important when it comes to VEMDAS order of operations. But essentially what it is, is if you have something on the outside of a bracket where addition or subtract is uh, or subtraction is happening inside of the bracket. Um, let me move this over. Uh, 
we can distribute this a inside and we get a times b plus a times c. And I don't want you to get confused as to why these letters are side by side. We are implying multiplication. So what this means is if we have something going on inside the brackets, specifically addition or subtraction, and we have a letter just kind of hugging uh, a parentheses or a brackets on the outside, we are going to multiply it to each of the nice letters or numbers on the inside of the bracket. So just like we did in the last slides, we're going to make a2, b3, and c4, just so that you can get an idea of what I mean. So instead, I'm going to have 2, 3, plus 4 is equal to 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. So let's see if this is true. This is 2 times 7, and this is going to be 6 plus 8. This is 14, and this is 14, therefore it checks out. And to help you remember the distributive property, I'm literally saying that I'm distributing the A to both my B and my C. I'm distributing the A on the inside of the brackets. So three laws, distributive, associative, and commutative. Now that we know our laws, we are going to talk specifically about the properties of 0 and 1. When we talk about number 0, it has a lot of important properties for both um, multiplying but also um, adding. So for example, we know, let's focus on 0, or I'll even write it 0. We know that if we do anything, anything plus, plus 0 equals to that anything. And what this is called is, this is the identity element for adding. And the thing is, is that we have the word identity. It's because it's literally not changing anything about the identity of any number. 2 plus 0 is 2. It doesn't change it. It's the identity. The same thing. 100 plus 0 is 100 doesn't change anything. It's the same identity. So we call this the identity element for adding. The other thing that we need to talk about is what happens when we multiply anything times 0, it's equal to 0. So anything times 0 is 0. That's the other thing about 0. So we have one thing, two things. The third thing about 0, or you know what, let's go back to the multiplication here. 0 times 7 is 0, but also, also, 0 divided by 7 is 0. But the third thing about 0 is although 0 divided by 7 is 0, 7 divided by 0 is undefined, which we will learn about either in class or in another lesson. There's a reason why we can't do 7 divided by 0. I mean, if you think about this logically, you can't really divide 7 by nothing. you got to divide it by something. So we say it's undefined or it's an error. And one of the other things is when 0 is the exponent, anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. And we will learn this when we do exponent laws uh, in later classes. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. 9 to the power of 0 is 1. 100 to the power of 0 is 1. The only exception is 0 to the power of 0 is undefined. We can't do 0 to the power of 0. Undefined. I think those are all the very important things about the number 0. Now we're just going to talk about the number 1. Number one. What are some important things about the number one? Well, if we do one times anything, one times anything, it is that anything. So whereas for zero, if we did anything plus zero, it was anything. This is one times anything. So we say that one is the identity element for multiplication. 
examples would be 2 times 1 is 2. 100 times 1 is 100. The same thing no matter what when we multiply it by 1. The same thing goes for division, but we're going to say it's the identity element for multiplication, but we can also say and division. And also, if we have anything to the power of 1, like 12 to the power of 1, it's equal to itself. So it's very much the identity element for operations such as multiplication and division. And that's it for the properties of 1 and 0, but I, I would say that there's a lot more important properties for 0 than there is of 1. And don't forget that we've also covered the properties for numbers, which is the distributive, associative, and commutative properties or laws.